Hi, I'm Jackie Smith. Please join me tonight with Emmett Smith and one of my favorite NFL coaches, Joe Gibbs. All this tonight on Sports Waves. Live from Miami Subs Grill in Dallas, Texas, with the music of Emerald City, this is Sports Waves. Now, here's your host, Mike Ducey. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Sports Waves. Great crowd for the show today because we have an outstanding show ahead for you. We have the best running back in football with us. We have one of the greatest tight ends in the history of pro football. And... Well, one of the top coaches ever to lead a team in the National Football League. All of those guests and more surprises coming up on the next hour here on, uh, on Sports Waves. Also with us, one of the best-dressed former tight ends ever in the National Football League, Alfredo Roberts, my co-host. I thought you were giving me the, the best tight end ever, but I know that's not true. Apparently, uh, it, it was it was leather night on Sports Waves, and nobody told me about it. But uh, Fredo, looking uh, looking pull, outstanding. Pull these old rags out of the closet. Ready to go tonight. Some headlines from the past Sunday in the National Football League include, I guess, the 49ers surviving and keeping the inside track for the playoff spot, the uh, home field advantage in the NFC. The Cowboys getting a win, but uh, pretty banged up coming out of it. Jason Garrett suddenly their starting quarterback. Well, with the 49ers, everybody that played the Cowboys and beat them. A pass have uh, really dropped off, and the 49ers kind of went past that jinx. And yes, the Cowboys are pretty beat up right now. Uh, quarterback situation. I like Jason. I like Jason a lot. Uh, maybe more because he's a friend, but I think he's a pretty good little football player. Well, tonight on Sports Waves, we have a very special guest with us this evening. The NFL's three-time rushing champion, Emmett Smith, will be with us here in just a moment. Of course, great football players are always in the headlines, and it seems as though they are sometimes always in the center of controversy as well. While longtime Cowboy fans complain that Tom Landry didn't use Tony Dorsett enough, today the concern might be that Emmett is used too much. He's had an outstanding career already. He's still a very young man. Seems Emmett and Tony will also face comparisons always as two of the finest running backs in NFL history. God, who's the biggest running back in Cowboy history? Oh, boy. I like Tony Dorsett. Oh, Emmett Smith. Tony Dorsett. Emmett Smith. It is one of the great barroom arguments of our time. Who is the greatest Cowboys runner of all time? While history must wait for an answer, there is no question about which back got the most work. Go, Emmett! Go, Emmett! In less than five seasons, Mr. Smith has amassed 6,773 yards. At his current pace, number 22 will surpass the NFL's third all-time leading rusher in just eight seasons. But with his injuries piling up, the question is being asked more and more every day. How many times can Emmett Smith carry the ball 30 times and leave the field like this? All right, everybody, welcome Emmett Smith. Oh, this is good. Finally, we get to play together again. Huh? Finally, we get to play together. This time, you don't have to block. <laughs> so, Emmett, a, uh, another thousand yard rushing season came this past Sunday. You, you crossed that milestone again. After the, after the game, you said, well, you know, <laughs> still got to mean a lot, doesn't it to you? It, it definitely means a lot because, uh, you know, it's been rough. It's been a rough season thus far. I mean, not only for me, but for everybody, man. And, you know, dealing with injuries and all, uh, you know, it's just been pretty rough. Is it legitimate to ask the questions that were, were asked in that tape piece that we just saw about the, the beating that you take? the great numbers that you that you put up but still you're only what I guess 25 and, and and you know the injuries keep on coming do you think about that very much uh, I try not to um, you know uh, I'm gonna get the ball regardless of what I think anyway so there's really <laughs> there's really no need to really put a lot of emphasis on where I am and you don't want to carry the ball 20 from 20 sometimes a game 
uh, or 30 something, but you know, they hand it to you, what, what I'm gonna do? Turn around and give back to Troy <laughs> and stuff like that. But you know, so you just take it and get, just keep on going. But uh, you like to be rewarded at the end of your contract or whatever. You want people to think about all of the, the beating that you've taken and uh, the, the landed on the line because everybody on the football field laid on the line for one another. Oh, oh okay. And uh, all these injuries you had on the front line. Do you think it's still a chance that you catch Barry Sanders? Yeah, I, I still think it is. I mean, uh, it's going to be, I mean, it's, it's not going to be an easy road. You know, Fredo, out of all the people in here, Alfredo, you ought to know how I feel about that. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. And uh, my goal is to finish number one by the week 16. That's it. Emmett, there are a lot of people here in our audience tonight who have questions for you. And let's go into our uh, studio audience right now. I think Maddie has our first question tonight. Good evening, Maddie. Thank you, Mike and Fredo. Emmett is, as everyone knows, a great collector of sports memorabilia, particularly his famous touchdown footballs. Rebecca has a question for Emmett. So, Emmett, how many balls have you collected so far? Um, let's see. I don't know, Terry. I got about 60-some footballs. <laughs> about 60-some touchdown balls. Bill I know, uh, I know Bill Bakes have one of them. I have one. You have one? You gave... I, I gave Bill Bakes one of my touchdown balls when I scored about three touchdowns in Detroit a couple years ago. This is when he first hurt his knee. And you and gave uh, me one when I hurt my I knee. I gave Alfredo one when he hurt his knee also, so Alfredo have one and Bill Bakes have one. So mm -hmm. they, th those two guys, y'all want to buy them from Alfredo and Bill Bakes, y'all go buy them from Bill <laughs> Hey, was the collecting something that started when you were a kid or uh, as you grew Actually, older? I didn't get into collecting until I got to the NFL. Um, my rookie years when I learned all about the trading cards and the trading card business and found that my trading card was definitely one of the most valuable ones out there coming out as a rookie, so I decided to collect all my stuff and keep it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's uh, one of your rookie cards worth right now, do you know? Um, you might be, might be able to ask one of, one of them real collectors out there. They'll probably be able to tell you. But I think my score 101 T card is probably one of the hottest cards out. The Bowman, the Bowman card is a hot card. Um, uh, let's see. There's a number of good cards out there, too. Fredo, what's your, what's your rookie card worth right now? I don't have a rookie card. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Let's go back to our studio audience, Mark Meter. Mark? Thank you very much, Mike. And I'll tell you who I've got with me here is Michael Redu from Nations Bank. And while he's a banker, he's also a big sports fan and has a fan. Uh, a question for Emmett. Michael? Emmett, I wanted to um, know if you, is there any other adjustments you have to make uh, in the game when um, Troy is not there? Are there any other adjustments you have to make if Troy is not there? Oh, definitely. I mean, <laughs> even when Troy was there, I was sitting eight-man front. This week against Green Bay, I expect to see a nine-man front. So, you know, I, I think uh, the adjustments... Not only do I have to make adjustments with Troy's gone, but I also have to make adjustments within the line because uh, uh, Derek Kennard is kind of banged up, Nate is banged up a little bit, and uh, granted, you know, Eric Williams is not there anymore, and uh, so it's going to be diff different and difficult uh, as usual. And uh, but you know, you just make adjustments as the game go on. Uh, you you can't really make any adjustments beforehand because uh, you don't know how the defense is going to react and how they're going to come out and play. And then you don't also know how your own guys are going to go out and play. They may go out and play a superb game, and if they play a superb game, it makes my job a lot easier. Much more with Emmett Smith coming up. Our Waveline question tonight, we want you to get involved. The question tonight is, Emmett Smith or Barry Sanders, which back would you take if you were starting a team today? There you have We'll ask you that when we come back. The number is 1-800-700-9002, and you'll have your chance to make your choice. Coming up later on Sports Waves, three-time Super Bowl winning coach Joe Gibbs. Also, Hall of Fame tight end Jackie Smith, a longtime Cardinal. And our celebrity pick three from Rob Becker, the caveman. Now here's Jody with a word from our sponsor. Jody Gregory and Sports Waves is brought to you by Apex Authentic NFL Pro Line Apparel available at Foot Action. For every action, there's Foot Action. By American Airlines, something special in the air. By the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, the world's largest hotel, casino, and theme park. And by Miami Subs Grill, great food served fast. We'll be right back with more from the Emmett Zone. Goal by Barr. Andre 
Coleman runs it back, follows it, blocking and breaks it. Coleman's going to run it, he's going to win it. Inside the 20, he's going to pick it the distance. Rookie. We're back on Sports Waves. I'm Mike Ducey with Emmett Smith, Alfredo Roberts, our co-host tonight. Uh, Emmett, before we went to the break, there was the waveline question about yourself or Barry Sanders. You're asked about this all the time, but how do you respond when people say, who do you, who do you think the better runner is, yourself or the young man from Detroit? I think the young man from Detroit is. I really do. I really do. I mean... Hey, I mean, I'm not, be I'm not being biased because... I play the Cowboys or because it's, I'm, I'm being compared to another individual. I mean, when I watched that guy run, man, when I saw him run through Tampa Bay, and not only that, I sat on the sideline and watched him run through the Dallas Cowboys. And that itself was a task. So, you know, I mean, the guy's amazing. He really is. He really is amazing. Well, let's shift gears here for a minute. The first time you was on the show, we had you signing books. Is that a market? You know, I'm trying to do different things. Is that a market I need to do? write my own biography? Is that, is that working well for you? <laughs> working okay for me <laughs> you know uh you know but what works for me man i always work for you or the next person and uh you know how did that I think come about market, is the question how did, they, how did the book come about yeah. well actually um you know when you think about the season that i had last year it was almost like a dream come true season for me i mean coming into the season missing the first two games arguing about the contract and all that stuff and getting all the negative and good press from the press and all and uh, getting into the season and and being able to come from dead last probably to first in the Russian title. And uh, not only that, but, to, uh, but for the team to have the type of success that we've had and to play in that Giants game with this bum shoulder that I had. And, uh, you know, all those things just, and then winning the league MVP and then going to the Super Bowl for the second straight year in the road and winning that. I mean, man, it was like a dream come true season. I just wanted to share it with everybody. I wanted to let people know exactly how I felt from the start to the finish. And, uh, you know, it, no better way to do it than the book. Do I have a minute to share a story? Yeah, sure. Emmett won, he was up for the Miller Lite Man of the Year Award in Pasadena. And what you're talking about, the, what works for you might not work for me. So I had to go and accept this award for Emmett because I, I couldn't practice and Emmett had to practice to get ready for the Super Bowl. And so they called Junior Seau, and they called Steve Young, well, they called Junior Seau and Cortez Kennedy, and then they called Emmett Smith. And so I walk out, and everybody boo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was explaining that Emmett was at practice and all this, because all these guys were playing in the Super Bowl. So I, that, you're right. What worked for you might not work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the more uh, interesting parts of the book for a lot of us was the, some of the things you wrote about your early life, about your family, what mm -hmm. your family meant to you, your early football career. Kind of interesting to actually look at that in print and kind of actually see your life there on the pages of a book. Well, I'll tell you what, when you're sitting there and you, you're sitting right, right there, you're talking to Steve Delson or the writer of the book, and uh, you're telling your life story, and uh, you reflect on all the things that you did as a kid and, and, and throughout your life, I mean, man, I just sit back and I smile at it all because, I, I mean, a lot of the things that you've done are, is funny and some of it is sad and some of it is good and, and it brings out a, a glowy feeling out of a person, I mean, out of me anyway. It, makes my, it just makes me smile when I think about my brothers and sisters, my mom and dad, the way we grew up, my grandparents, my cousins, uh, the friends I encountered throughout on the, along the way. And uh, it's just a beautiful story for me. Anyway, I mean, they may not think it's beautiful, but to me, it's a beautiful story. Book is The Emmett Zone, for those of you who don't know that. Let's go back into our studio audience. Some more questions. Here's Maddie. Thank you, Mike. Like many fans, this fan has a question about the depth chart at the position of quarterback. Emmett, two years ago, you said that behind Steve Berline and Troy Aikman, you were third on the quarterback list, <laughs> and then followed by Jay Novacek. Are you still considered in the depth chart, along with Jay, for the quarterback position? No, actually, I think D Jay's just moved up the second team on the depth chart, and probably me, I probably dropped back down to third. I think, I think the Cowboys have plans of tossing and handing off me, to, giving me the ball a great deal on, on Thursday. So I'm going home tonight and let my legs rest. Matter of fact, I'm going to take them off and put them on the shelf. 
we talked during the break. People are constantly asking about you know your health and how you're feeling, and there, there, it seems to be there are a lot of injuries this year. But you said it's basically the way you feel at this point in, in any season. It, it, it definitely is, and uh, I mean throughout playing a 16 game schedule, especially in the NFL and the pounding that everybody takes on the field, there's a period during the season when your body just say forget it. It just don't do me no good to be sore. It's just going to be numb from that on in. So, I mean, and that's the stage that we're at right now. Body just feeling numb, tired, and beat all up. It's just don't ache anymore. You're used to it now. Let's go back into our audience. Here's Mark Meter. Thank you very much, Mike. And I'll tell you, in the media, a lot of times the players get a lot of bad publicity, and you only hear about them when they're doing something wrong. Well, Gary Winters wants to congratulate and thank him for something that he's done good for the community. I mean, I just want to thank you for your appreciation for... Uh, the, all, signing all the autographs out of Sands for that big food drive. We collected a lot of food out there, and I know that you even personally delivered it yourself. We want to thank you very much. Thank you. You're, invo you're involved in a lot of things, and, and uh, especially during the holiday season. I know that means a lot to you to be involved. Well, definitely, man. Uh, I mean, I'm in a unique situation, and, and everybody cannot afford what the right next person can, and, uh, and people can always give what the next person can give but you can give something it, no matter if it's time no matter if it's a can good no matter if it's a penny or whatever just the thought of giving and just the enjoyment of giving to someone else is is, is, is a nice feeling well the uh, the 49ers as we start to close things out here 49ers struggle with the rams uh, on on sunday night I, I'm, I was thinking as I'm watching that game, I thought, I wonder if guys like Emmett Smith are at home watching that game and, and, and hoping for the, that the Niners will lose. Did you have a chance to tune in? <laughs> That's probably the first football game I sat there and watched the whole year. It really is. I mean, I saw the game, and the Rams were doing great, and I was cheering for the Rams. I'm not going to say a lot to you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, I seen the Niners play. They, they probably played very poorly last night, too. They, they didn't play that way against us. I mean, they went out against us and executed to perfection. Last night, they slopped around and then they turned the ball over and all those things and uh, didn't play as well as probably they would like to have. But the Rams did a good job last night. But a team, they found they find a way to lose. Some teams just have the habit of finding a way to lose a game. And uh, the Rams did that last night. Well, you've got the Packers again in the short week on, on Thursday. It's something you're used to. Do the Cowboys have an advantage because they play with that short week every Thanksgiving week? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think we have an advantage at all because of the, the, the injury situation. And uh, Green Bay has some injuries also, but I don't think they're as, as quite severe as ours. But I think the one advantage we do have is that we are playing here in Texas Stadium. Green Bay had to fly from, what did they play yesterday? New York. I think they no, played it. No. Yeah, they played somewhere. Buffalo was Sorry, yeah, Buffalo. They, 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 played they, they lost they, to Buffalo. Well, right. they played, they, not only did they lose in Buffalo, but they had to fly back to Green Bay. We we won yesterday, and we just stayed here at home. So, you know, and plus we had an opportunity to get 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 uh, ice on guys that were injured last night, and uh, they probably didn't get back to Green Bay till late last night. And all that, we had an opportunity to go out and work out today. Them guys were tired and all that stuff. So we may have a little bit of an edge. How much, we don't know. We have to wait and see on Thursday. Evan Smith, good of you to stop by. We appreciate uh, having you with us on Sportsway. Thanks are. a lot. Evan Smith of the Dallas Cowboys. And another Mr. Smith will be joining us in just a few minutes. Hall of Fame tight end, longtime Cardinal, Jackie Smith, in just a few minutes. Don't forget our wave line question. If you were going to start a football team, and you had your choice of Emmett Smith or Barry Sanders or neither, what choice would you make? 1-800-700-9002. That's the wave line. We're back with more sports waves in a moment. Tonight's Sportsways with Mike Ducey is being sponsored in part by Acura, by Al's Pick You Park, by Metrocell, and by Acock Tire and Wheel. Ha! It's a fabulous place. We offer a bountiful variety of martial arts and lovely kitchen cabinets. Luxuriate in our selection of mufflers. Select the entertainment for your next party and pick out that new gazebo. Beauticians are standing by, so you'll look your best when you select from our range of pneumatic tools. All at Southwestern Bell Yellow Pages. Well, Mabel finally got a man. <laughs>
to sports waves you know when you mention the greatest tight ends in nfl history john mackey kellen winslow mike ditka are some of the names that come to mind add to that list a player who played that position longer than any of them hall of famer jackie smith after 16 years with the st louis cardinals and a brief retirement jackie smith was called out of retirement by the dallas cowboys in 1978 in his only Super Bowl season, in the twilight of Super Bowl XIII, Jackie Smith lived every player's nightmare. Roger, back to throw, has a man open in the end zone, caught, touchdown, drop, dropped in the end zone, Jackie Smith all by himself. Oh, bless his heart, he's got to be the sickest man in America. While Smith will be remembered for that one play, his Hall of Fame career is not forgotten. Unlike those before him, this tight end could burn defenders deep, and his 16.6 yard career average per reception, incredibly high for the position. It was Jackie Smith's philosophy that a player must go as far as his strength and talent will take him. And this was a journey he was prepared to make every time he stepped on the field. At career's end, one could only be impressed by the play of this 17 year veteran. He was a Pro Bowl player five straight years, caught 480 passes for nearly 8,000 yards, and his most dominant number, the number of players he fought through to reach the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And ladies and gentlemen, here's Jackie Smith. Jackie, welcome to Sports Waves. It's great to have you here. Glad to be here, man. Glad to be here. Bring back some memories, seeing the old videotape. I guess you see it from time to time. From time to time, but it brings back a lot more memories seeing all the great people here in, in Dallas, and I'm really thrilled to be back. It was a great time for me and my career. You're asked about the Super Bowl game all the time, and allow me to get it out of the way. You had the greatest numbers, uh, one of the gr some of the greatest numbers of any tight end. The one play is one that I, I'm sure people talk to you about uh, as well. How'd you deal with that after it happened? How'd your teammates help you, your family, things like that? Oh, well, it was a long process, but, um, but you, know, no, you just deal with it. You uh, try not to get too excited when you do well in a game. Uh, it's really been my philosophy all these years, all those years. And uh, when you do badly, you try not to get too down about that. You try to keep the medium, uh, happy medium about the thing. But um, it was a difficult time because you have to be so emotionally involved. As this guy will tell you, anybody that played the game, you have to be so emotionally involved to get to the point that we do and play the way we do sometimes that it has to take its toll on your emotion, but you get over it. And, uh, and it's just a game, really. And, uh, and so we just try to have as much fun with it as we can and not take those things to heart so much. What was the most, I guess, favorite thing about the game? What, what do you remember that was really, everybody always hopped back. I mean, I, I had some bad moments in my career. 
that I don't like to even talk about. What is the one that you like to express? You mean the what, good times or bad yeah, times? Yeah, good times, good, good times. times, that's all. Well, the, I tell you what, I think that the good times was things that we didn't even know was happening at the time, and that is that all the good and wonderful people that I met at the time, not only the people that I met, and I'm not saying it because I'm here, but, but the, rep, the reception I got when I was in Dallas, the reception I got in St. Louis, that we have always had in St. Louis as far as the, the, um, uh, the relationship we've had with the fans, but mainly it's been, I think, is the players. I still have my closest friends are the players, and I think that because of, the, uh, because of the atmosphere and the environment that you find yourself in, you're able to form some pretty fast relationships, as you know, some good, strong relationships with friends. Those people remain friends to this day, and I think if I had to pick out one thing, it'd be the relationships with people, especially my teammates, that I think was the most meaningful. More with Hall of Famer Jackie Smith coming up. Also, when we come back, the caveman will have his celebrity pick three. You'll want to stick around for that. First, watch Sports Waves on a brand new big screen TV. Heather has more information on how you can do that. If you think Sports Waves looks good now, you won't believe how good we look on this TV we're giving away. It's a Panasonic Super Flat TV system and it can be yours. Send your name, address, and phone number to this address. We'll draw for the winner December 5th here on Sports Waves. We'll be right back with more from Jackie Smith after this. Troy, 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 Troy Aikman, rumors are flying about you in a trade. Are they true? I'm afraid so. Oh, yes. Yes. Where, oh Where are you going? Going to my GMC dealer to trade my old GMC for a new one. That's right, Troy. Now till December 12th, get higher trade allowances, instant financing, and special closeout prices on all the remaining 94 GMC trucks. And check out the all-new 95 Jimmy and the full-size Sierra. Looks like another winning season for GMC.
try to tame it. So, Jay Lombardo, tell us, who is the best-dressed man at Lombardo? All my guys are the best-dressed. Take these guys, for instance. Hey, we don't need the big board for this. I'm the Hey, 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 nobody's looking better than me on my show. Problem is, Mikey, you got a bad show. You need some pizzazz. Pizzazz is not what I need. It's a good fit. Tony, this is a perfect fit. Now, right, we need the big man with the chalkboard for this one. Now, let's check on the bus. What about hey, what about us? How about my stuff?